Okay, Cameron Gloves Red, delighted to be here with Hannah Rankin. How are I'm, you, Hannah? I'm grand, thank you. I'm good. It's, uh, it's great to see you the last time uh, I seen you over usually running about uh, London streets trying to find a, a coffee shop to interview in. So <laughs> I know, we did really well last time actually. I know, the, yeah. I know, you found a, a really good setting for us this time around. Yeah. Um, what's it like being home? Oh, it's, as always, it's so nice to be home. Like, I just, I, just, I miss Scottish banter. Like, I miss it all the time. When I'm down in London, people just don't have the same sense of humour and they're not as uh, funny, you know? So it's nice to come home, just hear the accents and just, yeah. It's just lovely, it's really nice. Yeah, and when did you arrive and, and how long are you here for? Could you tell us maybe some of the things you're doing apart from your fighting Saturday night? Yeah, so um, I arrived up here on Monday. Um, I'm fighting on Saturday, so I just thought it'd be easier to be here, be based here, sort stuff out. Um, I've just I've got a few uh, dads and daughters coming to the show on Saturday night, which is a real really nice for me. Um, but also, I got to meet someone in the gym today. I got to meet a girl called Heather, which was really nice, and show her a little bit on the bags, and that's what it's all about. You know, I want to inspire more young people into a sport, so it's been great to meet her. I'm hopefully going to be doing some things with uh, the Celtic women's team, which is kind of exciting, so you'll hear more about that later on this week. Um, and yeah, no, actually after the fight I've got to do some stuff with Adaction, um, which is a great charity based here as well. Um, it's all over the UK, but working with one in Scotland for a bit, so as always, it's a, a busy time, but I get, try to get as much in when I come home, you know, because I, I do miss being here and it's it's nice to be able to do good things, you know. Mm. So. And could you tell, so Saturday night, I'm going to see you at the Paisley Lagoon Centre. Yeah. Uh, of course, the last time you were there, you beat Sarah Curran, became Scotland's first ever world champion. What will it be like to, to return to that venue on Saturday? Uh, I mean, the Paisley Lagoon Centre is my kind of lucky charm, you know. I won my world title there last year. Um, I actually won my first ever title, the WBC Silver Middleweight title there. So, um, every time I've boxed there, I, it's been a good night for me. So. Touch wood, I'll have another good one on Saturday. Um, it's a great vibe, you know, and it's a great venue. Uh, there's lots of, it's, it's lots of like um, great people boxing there on the card. We got, it was a really good card, there's eight of us there. And um, I think it's going to be a lot of people coming along, so it's going to be a good vibe, which I'm yeah. looking forward to. Um, and could you tell us, I know there's been a, a late opponent change with, with someone you previously fought, um, Eva. Could you tell us a bit more about that, Hannah? Yeah, so there was a, a real problem with a, an admin scenario. Um, right up until a couple of days ago, I was meant to be fighting Gifty Ankara um, from over in Ghana. Uh, which would have been a great fight for me, someone I was really looking forward to fighting, but unfortunately, uh, due to various uh, admin issues, uh, she can't be here, which is really frustrating. It's not on our end, of course, we're super organised, but um, yeah, a bit frustrated about that. But thankfully, Eva Bayek, she's uh, stepped in last minute, and uh, we fought before about a year ago. Um, so it was a great fight, people really enjoyed it last time, so I think we're going to be putting on another great show this Saturday and it's just a chance for me to get out there and improve on my last performance against her and showcase what I've been working on in the gym, so mm -hmm. still focused, ready to go, um, yeah, just a shame it's not the person I was wanting it to be. Mm -hmm. yeah, but. And for me, the last time I was actually at that fight, Hannah, when you, when you fought Eva, and uh, for me, it, it was a kind of dominant performance, she outpowered her that night. What, what kind of dangers does, does she bring? What's her qualities, would you say? She's a really awkward fighter. Uh, she's not someone, she's not a very standard sort of like the setup that you want. And she's got little herky jerky movements, so you've got to time her correctly. Otherwise, she's, she's skipping about all over the place. So mm -hmm. it's a great person for me to go up against, like, you know, cutting off the ring, setting my combinations. I've been letting little feints go in, so loads of stuff that I've been working on in the gym, so that's mm. my kind of goal. Um, and just trying to like catch her in those little awkward moves, so um, yeah, yeah, no, it'll be fun. Yeah, and, and obviously the, in the last fight out in Malta, it didn't go the way any of us wanted to no. or you. What, what have you, can I, have you changed anything since then and, and what would you say is your main ambition for 2020? Is it just retaining that world title? So my main ambition for 2020 is to regain my world, ta world champion status. Um, I obviously want the rematch with Patricia Begolt uh, as soon as possible. Um, I lost it by a point, some people had it as a draw. Um, I think I knocked her down in the fight, it wasn't counted as a knockdown. Had it been, I would still have my title. So there's a lot of uh, things involved in that fight and unsorted things that I want to go back and fix um, and I 100% can guarantee I win in a rematch and I know that she doesn't want the fight so you know I'm chasing that I want that rematch mm -hmm. um, for me I learned a lot of things you know about myself my team and the people that I trust and people that are there to support me and, um, and like a massive thank you to those sponsors that stood by me since that loss um, 
you know, you always, they always say you learn the most from your losses. And I think, yeah, I learned like, you know, we trained for so many things in the camp and I, it was all my fault. I rushed the beginning and I got, I got dropped at the beginning. And, you know, you live and you learn. But as I always say, is I, I'm learning on the job. Not I had a massive amateur background or anything like that. So first time I've ever been dropped in a fight. So first time I've ever had to deal with that. Unfortunately, it happened to be on a massive, massive situation for me where I was meant to be defending my world title, fighting for, an, uh, you know, another one. So unfortunately, they always say these things happen at the worst possible time, but you learn from it. And mm. I know now I just like, I'm super much more focused and me and Noel have been working on so many things in the gym and just like really listening and really paying attention to stuff and not letting anything go by me, you know? And so I've learned a lot from it and that's what I want to showcase on Saturday. Like, yeah. I've, I've leveled up since then. And something that was clear to me is you didn't really have much of a break at the festive period like others. You seem to be kind of back into training pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, how much of a break did you have and, and how was your time over Christmas and New Year? Uh, it was, you know, I was home for four or five days uh, for Christmas. It was a short period, but um, I think any fighter that's experienced a loss, especially a loss of a world title, knows how much it eats away at you. It's that I'm not that, I've never been that kind of person just to sit on my laurels anyway. And also, when you're frustrated with your own performance and the mistakes that you made which caused the situation to occur, not because you were just outclassed or anything, because you made silly mistakes, that kind of eats away at you. So like, it's hard to want to relax and enjoy your time off because you want to get straight back in there and sort it out. I mean, that's my own personality. And if, I, if something goes wrong, I want to fix it immediately. Yeah. So for me, I had four or five days at home, which was really nice to spend time with my family. Um, and then I was back down in London probably about the 20, 28th of December. Um, I didn't do New Year, much to most Scottish people's horror. <laughs> I felt really bad about it, but um, no, I was in bed by half ten. Uh, but, you know, it was a real good time for me to reflect with my family and, you know, get my kind of close, my team close to me. And yeah, like Noel's been an absolute saint. He's been in the gym with me all the time. <laughs> We've been focused on things and yeah, it's it's been good for us to work through some stuff for, for this fight coming up and yeah, you know, I, I haven't had time off but it's kind of what I wanted. Like I wanted to be back in there working hard, changing things that I needed to change and being like super disciplined with stuff. So I feel like I'm really ready for Saturday. Mm -hmm. And something I wanted to ask you, Hannah, do you think from being at your previous fights in Scotland, um, you've got a massive support. Mm -hmm. Even when you finish your fights, you've got tons of people waiting to see you and yeah. congratulate you and take your pictures. See, in hindsight, would, would you prefer you know, maybe a title fight just being in Scotland rather than away from home? Do you think that was a factor? Um, I don't... There are, there are a lot of difficult things with the fight being away in Malta. Obviously, you, you haven't got your home fans and that that is a massive part of being a boxer, you know, it's like, I think everybody gets that added little buzz when they've got their support, yeah. um, support with them. And I definitely miss that, you know, but then also on the other hand, it takes the, it sort of takes the pressure away because you're not with all your family and all your friends all sitting there and you've got all the faces you see in the crowd, you know, yeah. but you know, I, I definitely miss that. And, um, I think in hindsight, I would have loved to defend my title at home. But, you know, it is what it is and it was an opportunity that was was all sorted out and paid for and, and there was real positives going there, but um, it just didn't play out in my favour. And uh, yeah, like I said, I've learned from it. Yeah. It's a harsh way to learn, but I learned. Yeah. And uh, Salita Promotions that mm -hmm. you, you signed with in, in the US, that kind of US based company, is that correct? Yeah, so they, they're a US promotional company and whenever I'm in the States, I fight on uh, Salita Promotion cards, you know, so uh, I'm, but I'm free to fight elsewhere. Uh, in Europe and the UK because obviously being from here I've got fans here and stuff like that so you know it's definitely it's, it's a good freedom for me and it means that I'm free to do certain things obviously my goal is now to get back to the States because I love fighting over there as well um, and obviously being a Salita Promotions fighter is a real honour and I want to be back on those cards again so this uh, fight on Saturday is my kind of starting point to getting back to that position. Yeah and someone I wanted to ask about is an old four of yours, uh, Clarissa Shields so uh, I was laughing when I seen Clarissa coming over and spend some time with you and some sparring and I think mm -hmm. you guys went to a show together as well. Yeah. Um, What's the relationship like between you two now? Because we look back at those famous pictures when you were uh, head to head with her. Do you know what? Like it's 
it's an amazing situation. It's only could happen in boxing. You know, you, you'd leather each other for, for 10 rounds and then, you know, you end up becoming stable mates and you're with the same promotional company. And, you know, I would cons consider Clarissa a really good friend these days. I know people wouldn't <laughs> think that from our setup, but actually when we fought, it, we didn't like each other. We didn't get on. There was nothing there to like. We were chalk and cheese. And there's nothing similar. And it's, it made it a great fight. It made the build up fantastic. Um, but nowadays, you know, like, it's fantastic to work with somebody of her level and you know you can appreciate her skills and where she's been and what she's achieving and uh, it's great that we get on so well because I benefit from that sparring you know and her knowledge and things like that so when she came over it was really good to work with her um, and it can only make me better and I've absolutely no qualms in going to work with people that are better than me to make myself better um, I've done that in my music career and I, I apply it to my boxing career um, my ego is nothing to do with that you know I just want to get in there and learn and she's one of the best so it's great that we're now friends and that we can work together and we have the same promotional company so there are benefits with that you know and I'm the first person to say yeah we get on really well and it was it was nice having her here, you know, yeah. it was really good. Um, another person I wanted to ask how you got on with is, uh, is it Savannah Marshall? Aye, uh, yeah. A wee bit of beef with recently. What, what's the latest status with that? It seems to be a bit of beef on Twitter. Is, do you think that's a fight that could potentially happen? Well, um, Savannah Marshall, well, n not, not someone that says much really most of the time as far as I'm concerned. And then suddenly when I lose my world title, she's suddenly got loads to say about herself, you know, and I'm just like, so where's this all coming from? If we were in person to person, I don't think she'd say any of it. So I don't want to hear any of your nonsense on social media. I've got no time for it. And if you want to fight me, that's great. But I know you need me because you need a named opponent on your record. So, I mean, as I, as I say, it's, you know, I'm not chasing that fight. I don't need that fight. You know, she's a super middleweight right now. She wants to come down to middleweight. She hasn't fought anybody of note. So she's asking, she's saying, oh, I want to fight you because you, you've you done stuff with your career. You've gone places, you've pushed yourself and it would be great for me to fight you because like I say, I fought you. And I was like, you know me, I'll fight anybody, but I'm not fighting you because you want me to. Uh, there has to be serious money involved there. There has to be a reason for me to want to fight you. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I don't need it. So, you know, I'm following, I'm a super welterweight and at some point probably going to go down to welter. So like she's a super middle coming down to middleweight and she's chasing, the, like she says, what she talks about is the Shields fight. So um, that's the fight that she wants, but she's trying to build herself up to it. Um, so yeah, no, I was, I was pissed off with her comments after I lost my world title. You know, have a little bit of respect. I've done a lot with my career. Um, so, yeah, I've got nothing else to say about that and she needs to go and fight somebody, you know, worthwhile, somebody her own weight <laughs> to go and do something. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if Eddie wants to get his checkbook out and there's a, a, a title on the line, then I'm not going to be turning it down mm. because I'll fight anybody anywhere. But yeah. at the end of the day, there has to be a reason for me. And at the moment, I don't need that fight. She needs that fight, mm. not me. Before I move on, Hannah, have you two guys ever sparred? Yep. Have you? Okay. Mm -hmm. We've sparred before a few times. Tell me, tell me about how they, how they went. Or I don't talk about sparring. That's Absolutely fine. don't talk about sparring. <laughs> I'll move on. Yeah. Um, something I wanted to talk about, a big organisation, uh, UFC. I see you quite, uh, in the gym quite a lot. Is it the UK UFC gym? Is that in Nottingham? Yeah, there's one in Nottingham. Um, I, I was really lucky to be working alongside them. I've known uh, Joe Long a long time and he was getting me and Noel involved when they were coming to the UK. Whenever I'm in the States, the UFC gyms uh, open their doors to me with welcome arms and I can train there whenever I need to. Fantastic facilities, great sort of vibe, an amazing place to train and it's great that it's in the UK. Um, and so yeah, I've been in there and out there. Um, also like, you know, I love Jiu Jitsu and I, I started in Taekwondo, I did Thai boxing as well. So I've done the other sides of things. So you never know, maybe you'll see me cross over at some point. Um, but for now, focus on the boxing. But it's great to be involved with such a fantastic name as UFC. And you know, any opportunity I get, I'm, I'm in there having a, having a go, moving around, and doing all that sort of stuff. So yeah. it's a, it's you know, the combat world is an interesting place. And I think if you're involved in one, you're interested in all of the others anyway. So. Yeah. And probably finally, the last question. Uh, I know that you you live in London and you've got the music side of things. I think everybody in the world's on the music side of things. So I won't ask you any more questions on it. Could you ever see yourself moving moving back up here, Hannah? I don't know. You never know. Um, it just depends. Like I would love to see women's boxing really grow up here, and I would love to be instrumental in that. So spending some more time up here to get that kind of going would be an amazing opportunity. 
I think it's probably something that would probably happen at the later end of my career, you know, when I retire maybe and I get back into the sport, like through maybe some coaching, setting up some work and gyms and meeting young young fighters coming through. I'd quite like to do that sort of thing if I was coming home for that. So, um, but at the moment, obviously my coach being based in London is where I, I'm based and obviously all my work's there. Also, when I'm in America quite a lot, it's easy to get to from London, it is from here, but um, I do miss home and it's somewhere I would probably end up coming back to later okay. on. Great. Well, listen, Hannah, I just want to uh, wish you all the best on Saturday. Hopefully I can catch up with you after your fight and uh, thanks very much for your time tonight. Thank Absolutely. You. See you right. there, Cheers. Saturday. Cheers.